Well, I don't think so. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at your handout. Have you added your link to, let's see, to the thesis uh, list here? Yes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look. Yes, I, I um, have the template. Uh, okay. The only thing, and maybe this is difficult, I'm not sure if it's possible, but there's a header and a footer. And I'm not sure if when you copy and paste it over, if you're able to copy and paste the header and footer. Um, because, um, let me see here. But what's that teacher? Okay, if you go into insert header, you'll notice that there's a header oh. and the the running head is in the header. Ah, okay. So what I let me see real quickly here if there's a if you open up this this is the template mm -hmm. and if you notice here see that there's a header so it appears on every page, right? Mm -hmm. Same way with the footer with the pages that it appears on each page. And I'm not sure if you, when you copy and paste it over, um, you can make a copy here or you can, um, I don't think you'll be able to move it. But just take a look at that. Um, you know, if you want to do it manually, you'll just have to go into insert uh, header or insert footer and add the page numbers. Okay. So, um, also, this does not have to be um, in bold, so it can be in just regular text, right? Um, and you might like add a space, you know, between each one, yeah. And move this up into the header. And let's see, the abstract will be on a separate page which it is. I'm not sure if there's a header. I mean a page break. Let me just... Right. So, for example, you can just do like a... I think it's... What is it? It's... Well, on a, on a Windows, it's probably Control-Enter. And this will do a page break. And then here, you do another page break. So... The abstracts on its own page, right? And then you have the rest here. So uh, the 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 idea with the and probably things get changed when you do a copy and paste. But take another look at this template and try to keep all of the headings the way mm -hmm. it is. So that way, you uh, for example, the first heading heading needs to be in bold and all the way to the left. And then you can just add the text okay. here. So may, you might want to take another look at that and like all of these formats. Okay. Yeah. Teacher, you say to suggest to look at uh, Pilar's document? Yeah. She copied, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how she did it. I haven't ta spoken with her yet about this. But if you looked at hers, mm -hmm. she did it. Mm -hmm exactly the way the template is. Now she hasn't added anything yet, but the first step is to bring it over and then you can just insert information into each one. But I couldn't, I couldn't... Um, you couldn't do it that way? Because she's like a private. I need to request permission to send the account. Okay, I don't know about that. Uh, Maybe she didn't uh, say that. Uh -huh. You know that in Google Drive we have to change to the, I don't know, anyone with the link has... Yeah, um, I don't, I'm not sure because I can access hers just like, like I can access yours just fine. Uh, yeah, Th that's okay. So you shared it correctly. Mm -hmm. You shared it right and I can access it, but... Uh, I think the the question is how you copy how you bring the information over. Um, so yeah, when you control A, 
you don't when you control all of uh, when you copy all of the text you're not copying the header so you may have to go back and add that yeah add the header letter later but let's say you copy and paste this so I'm copying this and let's say I want to create a new document Let's see what. It so yeah, so if you just do a copy and paste, it'll save everything the way it needs to be. Mm -hmm. See, now you'll have to go back and add the header and the footer. So that'll be kind of a separate process. Mm -hmm. But I think if you just control, copy and paste it over to your own document, it, it looks like it saves all of the formats correctly yeah okay so just try that you, and it might be easier to start again and delete everything so you don't have to go back and change everything so try it and if you have uh, you know doubts let me know but I think that would be the easiest okay so Okay, so let's see now. Uh, let's look at your research problem. I wish to learn more about how authentic materials can improve English learners' pronunciation. Because I want to find out how to use authentic material to help students to improve their pronunciation in order to understand how authentic materials can be used for teaching pronunciation so that teachers might use authentic materials. Okay. So, you're, you wish to examine, can you talk to me a little bit more about uh, what you want to examine, looking at authentic materials, and, and I would, I think we talked about this before, about improving, yes, I forgot to yeah. change the word, alright, so think, yes. yeah, what, what are you thinking about examining for your research? Mm -hmm. What? What do you, adelante? Adelante. Hola. Veníamos a ver algo del servicio social. A ver. Que ya traemos nuestras. Muy bien. Esta descripción y queríamos saber si nos puede ver. ¿Tienes copias? No, le sacamos copia. Si quieres sacar copias y yo lo firmo a todos. Ah. Sí. La firma la después de la copia. De hecho, primero necesita la, la firma del jefe. Antes. Ah, antes. Entonces, si quieres, con la firma de, de ella, sacar dos copias y yo lo firmo yeah. dos copias. Ah, okay. todo. Vale. ¿Nada más una copia de cada uno? O cómo? Bueno, mínimo para ustedes, y si la jefe también quiere su copia. ¿verdad? ¿El original yo, quién se lo va a quedar? Yo. Ah, ok. Entonces, una copia por la jefe y otra por la jefe. Así es. Ah, muy bien. Ajá. 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 Ok. Ahorita okay. okay. right. right. <coughs> um, so what what are you thinking about examining uh, looking at this research problem here of authentic material and pronunciation? Well, I was thinking about um, thinking of uh, maybe that I don't know if teachers think that using authentic materials could help <laughs> uh -huh. to. Um, I don't know, I don't know what instead of improve student's pronunciation, I don't know. Like a support of um, getting a better pronunciation. Or help them practice mm -hmm. pronunciation, you'd say. So mm, you're going to be observing class, mm -hmm. teachers using some form of, of authentic material. Have you thought about the type of authentic material that can we narrow it down to a certain type? Maybe I was thinking about uh, movies. Okay, or video. video. Or mm -hmm. Movies or video. Movies, videos, tutorials could also be tutorials. because they are like kind of very accessible. All right, because one thing I have to think about is finding teachers that that use that. But let's just let's leave it at 
general, so authentic material. Um, you need to figure out what you want to examine, like, for example, you mentioned here behaviors and opinions. So, opinions. The student's opinion of about a certain type of material or authentic material. Could be both teachers and students. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can talk about the, the uh, teacher's opinions about um, planning and implementing uh -huh. different materials. If uh, those type of material could, well, I mean, as I just said, plan planning and also maybe you have to use technology with this type of material. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the thing we need to find out is you need to try to have, do you have a literature review already completed or are you going to be starting, are you going to be starting a new literature review or? I think I need to improve it because it's very. Okay. <laughs> um, is there anything from the literature review that talks about technology or some aspect mm. of authentic material that you think you can observe this semester? Because we have to connect the theory, right, some aspect of authentic material with something that you think that you can observe. I don't think so. I don't know. Some type of technology or even well, video. Even. They, also, they only mention about internet and... Or even YouTube. Or... Movies and TV programs, but they only enlist, list um, all the types of authentic materials. All right, because we, we can't, yeah, the, the idea is that we try to include in our literature review types of authentic material in this mm -hmm. case that you think that you can yes. observe or use. So maybe it's, I don't know, sitcoms like you mentioned, or movies, or even news. Songs. Songs, maybe. Yeah, songs. Well, I only mentioned those type of authentic material. But I don't part. Okay, that's fine. So you might want to look at, um, and, and there's different ways we can work. Okay, so if you already have a literature review that you think you can use some aspects of the literature review, copy and paste the whole literature review over to this Google Drive document that we're going to be using for thesis seminar. And then from there, start adding and taking away, modifying, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then at any point, if you have questions, you can ask me about certain things about, I can, I'll have access, I can see the, what you have. Um, but we need to be thinking about what you really want to examine, like, you know, we can, you can look at this from a, a discourse perspective. You can look at the language that the teacher uses, not so much the material, but the actual language. What does the teacher say and what do the students say? And look at, like for example, the exchange, look at the initiation, response, and follow-up. Remember that from discourse analysis. And we could, You could look at that as your unit of analysis where you examine language, like what does the teacher, does the teacher use direct repetition? Does the teacher use uh, like synonyms, different ways, words that rhyme, you know, and, and you can look at the, the language. I like the, I like the. Okay.
es entregar los reportes de las así personas es, que llevamos y así. así es muy bien gracias All right, nada. Adiós. Adiós. so we need to be looking at um, uh, let's see so So we, if you look at it from a discourse analysis perspective, maybe looking at individual, you know, language, where then you do transcribe transcriptions, and you're actually looking at the discourse between what the teacher says and what the students say, right? And then if you fo if you focused on that, you don't necessarily worry so much about what materials. It's more about the language. That's another option. Mm -hmm. um, you know. So uh, right now we need to, you just need to decide on what you want really the the unit of analysis to be, or how, what are you specifically going to examine uh, with regard to pronunciation, and and you could you know there's a lot of different things you could you can do you can also examine interactional patterns between the students to practice pronunciation, but really the bottom line is thinking from a practical standpoint is what are you likely going to find? Because when you do your research, you have to find teachers that are doing this. And what you don't want is to go around, you know, after three, after a month of doing a literature review, trying to go about finding teachers that really aren't doing what you want, what you want to observe. So it's really about you know, finding teachers or, or working with certain teachers where you do an intervention where you say, okay, I want you to try, I want you to do this. I mean, can you do this in your class? And then you observe. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's... Um, the, li the lead review for the intervention needs to, well, if it's an intervention, needs to be the same as in observation. Yes, the inter yeah, the intervention that you want to propose is what you're going to observe, mm -hmm. and the, the literature review has to be about that intervention or you know top you know ca ca concepts that relate to that intervention. So, for example, what I've had students who have done like phon phonics, they've uh, did research on teachers, or, or maybe there was an intervention where they did it. Uh, uh, teaching uh, pronunciation with phonics and so uh, you know it, it can be you know it can be a method it can be uh, materials the intervention can be basically anything you want but you have to be able to find teachers who are willing mm -hmm. to work with you to do it if they're not already doing it obviously if they're already doing it then you don't have to do the intervention but when you do an intervention there's an added you have to be careful that you can find teachers who are willing to do it. They do it in a way that you want them to do it, or, or that helps you, right? Because there's a there's a chance that you you work with a teacher that says, "Oh, no problem. I I will do an intervention. What do you want me to do?" You explain to them what you want them to do, but they don't do it in a way that helps you with your research. I mean, it's possible they could just, and they're trying. They they're willing to do it. But they just don't do it well enough, or they whatever the way they do it is not helping you answer your research questions. Mm -hmm. So that's another risk, right? So either way, there's going to be risks in, involved, but you need to be kind of aware of if you want to do an intervention, okay, but be careful with these risks. If you want to do it the other way, where you just try to find some teachers, that that's a risk also, but that you are trying to account for that risk. So. You know, the, the hard part right now is finding the, the, the literature that relates to a practical study that you can do this semester. And with pronunciation, my only question to you is whether there are teachers that you feel that you can find to, to that, that place an importance on pronunciation that in their class they dedicate time with pronunciation. I think there, there is. But you need to find out what you want to evaluate. If you are very specific in certain technologies and teachers aren't using technologies, then that could be a problem. Uh, the language part is the easiest in the sense that if, they're, if they focus on pronunciation, they have to use their language. So there's, you're going to have something to measure. 
that's not a problem. But you're going to have to measure very, very deeply as far as doing a discourse analysis, measuring, doing transcriptions, and maybe you focus on fewer teachers because you're really going to have to dig deep into the language into one course or even one activity and measure the language, right? And you can look at you know, the words that they use to help teach pronunciation with the students. Mm -hmm. And what, did, what do the, te the, uh, the students do, whether it's working individually, working in, as a group to teacher, or whether they work in pairs, you know, and how they practice pronunciation. I have a question, teacher. Um, the, um, well, if I only focus on pronunciation, I need to find a teacher, but the teacher needs to focus exactly on teaching. I mean, during the whole course, or maybe well, yeah, you're one hour to week, or okay. So one way is that you, when you go look for your teachers, your participants, one way is to do like a very simple survey, and let's say you hand out a survey to 50 teachers or 25 teachers, you're asking questions about pronunciation and how they feel about pronunciation and how they uh, teach uh, pr pronunciation in their own classes. So from the information from the surveys, you're going to find certain teachers that may say, oh, pronunciation, every class I'm, I'm, I focus on a little bit of time on, on pronunciation. Because some of the questions that you're going to have is, when do you use? How do you work with your students on pronunciation? How often? And, you know, so they're going to give you this information. They're going to say either, oh, I never practice pronunciation. Okay, you put those teachers aside. Some will say, I use it, and this is how I use it. So based on that information, hopefully you can find maybe two or three teachers that say, based on the results, they say, pronunciation, very important. At the end of every class, I dedicate five minutes to pronunciation. Who knows? Whatever they say. You can then work with each teacher and you determine when and how you observe their class to focus on those moments where they, they focus on pronunciation. Now, let's say that they focus on pronunciation, let's say they say at the end of the class, then you don't necessarily have to analyze, you're going to observe the class, but you're only analyzing maybe a certain part of the class where, when they practice pronunciation. You're not going to be doing any analysis of the whole class, only those moments where they're, they're focusing on pronunciation. But the trick is to you know, uh, schedule your time and work with each teacher in a way that you get the information that you need, that you're not wasting your time sitting through a whole class where they don't practice yes. pronunciation. But that's kind of, you know, that's possible. That's not a problem. If the problem is finding the teachers. If you find the teachers, which I think you can, then you schedule the, the logistics, the practical uh, aspects of data collection. But the, the question is finding teachers. And I, I think, honestly, you know, with, if you look at language um, or even look at like the activities, if they use activities uh, for pronunciation, a lot of it depends on your literature review. Maybe the procedure they follow. Maybe the procedures, if it's a... Now, the procedure, I kind of categorize into language. I'm trying to think of the procedure, like, I don't know, or the use of board, the use of the board, maybe. Uh, in your literature review, you're going to have examples of either techniques or examples of use of the board or activities, whatever they call it then you can, you're going to say, oh, you know what, the, I'll, I should be able to find examples of, of that. Okay, and then from there, you include that in your literature review, and you look at the, you know, you consider that as far as how you, what you want to observe. And this would get to step two of your handout. What are you going to exa examine? Are you, is, are you going to examine a technique? Are you going to examine... A certain technique with the use of the board? Are you going to examine a certain language? Like an exchange? I don't know. <laughs> no, but I think what you need to do now is do a lot of reading and find studies. Find examples. 
because i don't want you i don't want you to start from zero here, man. i want you to have a clear idea about your research from the literature and get examples and say, you know what? i'm going to do something very similar. they did this. i'm going to do something similar. i might use the same questionnaire. i might use the same procedure or adapt the procedure. Okay. Right, so don't start from like zero or scratch. Start from get some ideas and find out how you can adapt your research to someone else, or even duplicate. I mean, the, the best scenario is you find a, a research and you do the same research, exactly the same research, but it's in your own context. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're going to get different results, but that's that's valid. That's fine. But you need to have some clear examples. And these same studies are going to help you find good research questions. You might use the same research question as someone else. Okay. So that's... I, there's a lot of things to think about here at the beginning, but we need to get it kind of right now so you don't have problems later on. And, you know, with pronunciation, I think it's a good topic, and we have students focus on it. Um, but but we need to focus on step two. What specifically do you want to examine? And what is the unit of analysis? Right, and if we have that clear in our minds now, then everything else kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. And we can even think about the practicalities because it's not too early to think about your participants, where you want to do your research, what schools maybe, how you might find the participants that focus on your topic, we need to be thinking about that now. Not all the details, but, but at least more or less the, the, the possibility of doing it, right? Because if you say, oh, I'll never find teachers that use this technology uh, to practice uh, a pronunciation, then you don't want to include it in your literature. Do you? Right? It doesn't make sense to include it in there if you know your research really has nothing to do with technology because you'll never find it. I mean, maybe you want to know more about it. Maybe you would like to. But if you know they never use wikis or they never use, you know, a certain technology to practice the pronunciation, better to, to shift, better to focus something else. Okay, so language, everybody uses language. That's not a problem. Maybe the use of the board, perhaps, some use some like uh, technique with using some sort of display, whether it's the, the, the board or, you know, uh, PowerPoint or something, something presentational where they say, okay, practice, uh, and they say this. That's kind of what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And later then you can see how do the students feel? How does the teacher feel about doing that thing, that one technique, or using that language even, using the way that they articulate with the uh, students? So we can kind of think about, you're going to examine behaviors and opinions, but what's the unit of analysis? What really are you going to be analyzing for your, for your research? And again, I go back to the, the research, if you can find examples of other studies. We need to be looking at studies. Yesterday, I saw a kids study, mm -hmm. where they use doubling. I'm sorry? Doubling. Doubling? Si. Si se me fue la palabra. Ajá. Ah, se me fue. Okay. Pero si es doubling, right? Doubling? Or, what is it? When, um, doblaje, I mean, well, the study was like a, for practice also pronunciation and fluency, I think. Uh -huh. mm, because, well, they have a um, piece of a movie, I don't know. Uh, dubbing, dubbing? Dub dubbing? 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 Ah, uh, like in movies, dubbing? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And they practice several times with mute and then with the, with the sound. And then at the end, they present the doubling. Uh -huh, dubbing. Uh -huh. and, but they had to follow exactly the the moments and maybe well, again, ah, okay. also the expressions okay. that they, well, in the scene. 
but <coughs> I don't know, I think it's kind of um, what I haven't seen this idea here, but also it could be like a Intervention? Intervention, yes, you can do an intervention. If you you know, if you have in mind teachers that you think you can work with that can that that have the time and, and able to do it, you know. But if they are at, you know, a certain school that doesn't permit that type of thing. But yeah, definitely you can do an intervention. You can if you but you need to have then you would have to have your literature review that talks about theoretical concepts that relate to that activity. Now, you're not going to talk about that activity in your whole literature review. You're going to talk about concepts that relate to that 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 activity. And that's a possibility that you can do that. Uh, if you want to do an intervention, you just need to, again, think about the, you know, who you can, where you can do it, and, and again, what you're going to examine. Are you going to examine individual um, like in this case uh, the, the language you still need to look at what you want to analyze it's an activity you're going to be analyzing the activity but what are you measuring from that activity what yeah, specifically are you going to measure like the behaviors um, like like okay so if they are go if they're using uh, dubbing okay are you looking at are the students working in pairs or they individually are they responding to the teacher are they responding are they working alone are they what are you what specific um, behaviors are you going to be measuring uh, like the language what are they saying so the, the analysis is, uh, could be a technique or... Okay, the unit of analysis could be the technique, could be like the activity itself. Okay, um, but what, what specifically are you going to be measuring? And, and when, I, when, when you talk about pronunciation, all right, um, you know, we're looking at kind of repetition. How are they... Uh, Using what are they saying in the class? Right, adelante, adelante. Say, yeah, yeah, can see. Say, ah, do me another. Say, 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 say. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we can examine the activity, but mm -hmm. what do you just ask yourself what you're going to be examining? Imagine you're sitting in class and you're you have an observation sheet. What are you going to have in your observation sheet? What are you going to be measuring? Yeah, and like how many times, for example, maybe you're counting how many times they are are pronunciating a word since the, the, the focus is pronunciation. Are they pronunciating the word several times or just once? Does the teacher say it and then the student says it? Or do they hear it on the, on the movie? Then they, I mean, well, how... The analysis uh, answers to the research questions or no? Well, the unit of analysis is the thing that you are analyzing. So in this case, it might be a practice, teacher activity. It could be uh, it could be the level of the teacher. So you're looking at different teachers. Mm -hmm. So the unit of analysis is three teachers. Or the unit of analysis is the type of activity. Maybe you analyze three different types of activities. The unit of analysis would be the activity. Oh, well. Or it could also all the way go down to language. The unit of analysis could be like an exchange. And that, that could be the level of analysis. It's, <laughs> think of it like in levels, right? Because it could go you could go from a school, you could go from a country, you could go from a city, you could go to a school's district, you could go to the unit of analysis could be a teacher. Teacher technique. Ah, okay. It's it like be, a, the place or no exactly. It's it's, it's the level. It's like whatever. It's the, the whatever you're analyzing. Are you analyzing teachers? Mm -hmm. Let's say you have three teachers, and you're analyzing the differences between those teachers. Then the unit of analysis is a teacher because you have three uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. If you're analyzing 
different techniques, the unit of analysis is a technique. If you're analyzing the language, the discourse between two people, then it could be the unit of analysis is the exchange, the initiation response, oh, follow yeah. up, that group, that's the analysis, because you're you're analyzing several of these units. Mm -hmm. So that's I don't know. It's it's kind of the level. Think of it in terms of levels, because you can go from world, like the unit of analysis, of the world. It could be to come to the country. You could uh, analyze level of, of of city, state, or school district, teacher, teacher technique, teacher language, word, even level. I mean, you can go really all the way down, and so you have to kind of think about about that, like what's the level of analysis or the unit of analysis. And this relates to what you're going to examine. This kind of, all of this kind of fit together. They all, they all have to relate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we need to really think about all of these aspects together. Even this, even your topic, pronunciation, okay, and authentic materials maybe. And then all right, what behaviors and what's the unit of analysis? Okay. So, I don't know, do you have kind of an idea about which direction you want to take your research? Well, at least I feel better. <laughs> okay. Why don't you do some research to bring in and read some, find, uh, try to find two or three research um, where others have done something similar mm -hmm. that you want to do. And and then we'll go from there. But try to find something between hopefully today or tomorrow. And if you still haven't found anything, we need to, to discuss it because uh, you need to make this decision within a couple of days so you can start developing your literature review. Okay. Okay. So um, really do as much reading as possible. And try to find some research, uh, you know, some examples of research that you want to that you want to do. Okay. All right. And you know, if you have questions, see me before next week so we can look at it and discuss this again. So we can basically, we need to fill out this handout. That's the whole objective here is to get this right first and then we move on. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you this, Ceci. And um, I just uploaded a video. I'd like for you to add this information that you have here to this page that I have that's called uh, student thesis list so just below your name add step one step two step three step four and add this information in your that you have ah, okay okay mm -hmm. and you know what and I'll look at this also when you have this completed then I know you know that it's that you are on the right right track I need to write something on this step Basically, what you have here, so like this, this is like one long sentence. You would just write this one long sentence here, in step one. Okay. Right. So this would be step one, and then step two, it's just this sentence only. In step three, you write this sentence. In step four, you can just say, "I'm doing a qualitative research study or case study or I see algo breve." See. You see in page right. It's in, uh, if you go into modules for week one, under student thesis list, mm -hmm. then you can click edit this page, and then below your name, you can copy and paste this and put it underneath your name as an outline. Okay. See? Yes. So, yeah, so try to find those articles right away, and uh, let me know if you still have some doubts about... About this because this what we're talking about today you need to really uh, decide on and have a good idea about what you want to include in your literature review okay. because this week we're focusing on organizing the literature review like how you want to organize it yes. all right okay okay we'll see you. all right so you have a good week thank you all right thank you bye, bye.